So tomorrow I have my metoidioplasty booked, which is a form of lower surgery for transmasculine people. I brought in a medical professional, Dr. Makes Cox, who's going to explain more about the technical side of things with the procedure metoidioplasty. So when taking testosterone, what's medically known as the bean, the devil's doorknob, the crown jewel, the bald man in a boat, significantly grows into a cocktail sausage. So metoidioplasty works with what you've grown naturally and turns your cocktail sausage into a fully functioning, fully wee throughing pee pee, albeit on the small side. So in stage one of metoidioplasty, they splice open your pee pee like a butterfly prawn and take a graft from the inside of your mouth to stitch on the underside. This is then left to heal and on stage two is closed up into a tube and the urethra is rewired through that tube so you can pee through your pee pee. Oh, in stage three, you'll get some balls. Thanks, Dr. Mix Cox. And on with the vlog. And I've been waiting a really long time for this surgery. So I started my transition about 11 years ago and my lower surgery has been changed a few times. They've changed the dates. And during lockdown, during COVID times, all lower surgeries were stopped for two years. So there's been a big backlog of people, including myself. I'm really excited about tomorrow, a bit apprehensive. I decided to go for a metoidioplasty because it is working with what I've got. And I'm hoping that that's gonna really help me to feel a lot more euphoria down there. And if it doesn't, I might also consider getting a phalloplasty after that, but I'm just hoping this works. So my prep for today is, I'm gonna take my dog for a walk. I'm gonna do some weights. I'm also, after that, I am going to scrub myself with this stuff, which is called Hibis Scrub, which is some hardcore, uh, soapy type stuff cleaning solution which they gave to me to use today and then tomorrow when I get to the hospital as well just to scrub myself all over with this stuff so that it's going to prevent me from bringing any infections into the hospital and also for me picking up any sort of nasty infections when I'm there as well like MRSA. I'm also printing out my PCR test and just kind of packing a bag I suppose generally and yeah I'm apprehensive about the whole process. I know that for the first week I will have uh, a big they'll be taking skin from inside my cheek so I'll probably have an inflamed cheek also I have a catheter in me and they're gonna sew my bandages to myself or something like that so it, everything will be in place and then I'll have to go back after a week for them to remove the stitches and uh, the catheter as well so yeah, apparently that's quite a painful process too. <laughs> so yeah, no pain, no gain. I'm apprehensive about the, the pain and the discomfort over the next few weeks, but I have to keep my eye on the prize and recognize that I've been waiting a long time for this. And also once the healing has happened, hopefully I will feel more euphoria in my body. And that's always the aim of the game. So today is the day. Uh, I woke up about seven o'clock in the morning and had some final food. So I had some oats and I had a smoothie. And then I went back to bed for a little bit and cuddled with my dog and my partner. And I did a post on Twitter yesterday about having my surgery and it got a lot of likes and a lot of support, but it also brought out some really nasty people. And I just think, I just wanted to share that, um, you know, when, when you're a public, when you're public and you're out and you, you share things with people, then you can get backlash and you know it kind of doesn't affect me as much anymore like I feel like I've built up much uh, a much thicker skin these days um, but yeah I mean it, the majority I'd say 95% or 90% is really really supportive so that's really good I'm just gonna focus on that and uh, yeah I'm excited about today I'm I've been kind of like an emotional roller coaster but I think I'm prepared for it so let's do this Okay, so uh, here I am at the New Victoria Hospital and um, I've got my, my sexy gown and I've got a, um, a dressing gown to put on now. I've just washed myself again with that hibiscus scrub stuff, um, which sounds great, but it's not. It's just like hardcore and you have to like put it in your nose and stuff and it really dries you out. So yeah, I'm ready for, for surgery today. Apparently everything's running smoothly. So yeah, wish me luck. So when I woke up, I had a bit of a, not panic attack, but I, I felt like I couldn't breathe. So that was, that was not great, hyperventilating. And yeah, last night was, was okay, but they were checking my vitals up until 12 o'clock at night. And then, yeah, I don't know if you can hear this machine. 
it's like squeezing, it's gonna happen now. That happens every 15 seconds or so, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like putting pressure on my feet. It's quite cool, there's like these, um, the sound isn't cool, but the, the actual um, thing itself, it's like uh, pumping up my feet and then letting go. So I think it's just helping with the movement of blood around my body to help uh, stop any sort of um, thrombosis deep vein thrombosis kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm talking okay. I feel a bit more swollen in the cheek today. I managed to eat something last night and I managed to eat something this morning. So I'm just um, chewing on the right-hand side of my mouth, which is which is great. That seems to be working fine. The surgeon just came in and had a look at everything and seems to be quite happy with the way that things are. So I think I'm, I'm on track to, to heal. This morning I had to, to do some mouthwash as well. So there's like an antiseptic that's, um, yeah, it's quite sore. And then there's uh, some other type of um, mouthwash too. Antiseptic and what's the other one? One cleans it and one numbs it basically. Yeah so that's about it. We're gonna be leaving here in about an hour and a half or two hours. They're gonna let me go from the hospital and then we'll head back to Brighton and then I'll be back in a week to get some stitches out. So yeah all is good. So I really found that first week to be incredibly full on. That first week was just incredibly intense and I was so grateful to have the support that I did have from friends and family around me. Um, getting through that first week after I got my catheter, my stitches and my stent out, that I really turned a corner then and it was really amazing uh, to see the difference that a week has made. So here I am about a week and a half after my surgery and I've been, I've been able to move about, to walk about, I went down to the beach. I'm definitely a bit more tired uh, than I usually am and I know that I need to rest a bit more. I'm quite sore and sensitive down there still. Um, the space in my mouth, although my cheek isn't as swollen as it was, I can still feel that cavernous space and I'm still using the mouthwash. So it's it's a long process but if you can get through that first week you're pretty golden. So the best discovery that I've had during this time is to reappropriate my Paxi's underwear which comes with this cup to be able to use this to protect my junk during a very vulnerable and sensitive time. So I felt a lot more confident uh, about having this protection and it was yeah it was really helpful for me so I would thoroughly recommend this.